Welcome to Online Worship with St. Andrew's United Church in North Bay on this fourth Sunday of Easter, April the 25th. Traditionally, the fourth Sunday of Easter is Good Shepherd Sunday, and so there are visual reminders here of the shepherding role of Christ in our lives. We've great, we are grateful that you have taken the time to join with us, and we hope that this time of worship will be a blessing to you. Members and adherents of the congregation are reminded that we have a congregational meeting coming up on Tuesday, April the 27th at 6.30. And in preparation for that Zoom meeting, this afternoon at 1 o'clock, you are invited to join with us in a practice Zoom so that you can learn how the mechanics of the meeting will run and maybe have an opportunity to see some friends while you're doing that. We hope that everyone will have access to the annual meeting, and if you do not receive the Zoom information in your email box, we invite you to call the church office or email the church and ask for that information so that you can join with us. I also want to draw your attention to the some of the announcements in the online newsletter, particularly that the Transition Committee is planning an opportunity in the month of May, Fridays over lunch hour, for people to drop in by Zoom and have a conversation about the future of the congregation. I invite you to read that invitation and to plan on joining us at least one of those opportunities. Here at St. Andrews, we gather on the traditional territory of the Nipissing First Nation. We travel with respect and honor their history and their stewardship of the land and commit ourselves to walking in truth and reconciliation toward a future of right relationship. Easter's new life shines among us. It shines in the smiles that brighten each day. It shines in the speaking of our name that says we are loved. It shines in the moments of peace that restore our life. The light of the world. The light of new life. I invite you to join with me in the call to worship. Come, if you are seeking quiet streams to calm your spirit. Come, if you are longing for places of safety and abundance. Come, if your soul yearns to be restored and given life. Come if you search for paths that lead to God's peace. Come and worship the one who leads us to wholeness and joy. We come to worship, trusting that there is goodness and mercy. In that promise of goodness and mercy, we are freed to be in relationship and in dialogue with God through prayer. And so I invite you into this time of opening prayer. Loving, risen Christ, who shepherds us with care, gather us together as your fold. Gather us in our uncertainty and vulnerability and still us with your loving voice. Help us to learn each other's name, to see each other to welcome each other as those who share your care. And then move us to be more fully present to one another, that we might shepherd as you have shepherded us. We pray this in the name, and we offer the words that Christ taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, what piece of scripture would you expect to hear other than the 23rd Psalm? I invite the choir to share with us the familiar text of the Lord is my shepherd in music. We've just heard the choir sing the familiar words of the 23rd Psalm. We can imagine that David, who became King David, later in his life is remembering the time when he was a young shepherd boy in the hills tending the sheep and thinking about how that experience helps him to frame his relationship with God. The words are ones that we often commit to memory ones that we hold in our heart that comfort us throughout life. But the words also can invite us into new ways of seeing our faith relationship with each other. And so in a moment, you're going to see a series of illustrations by Tim Ladwick in a book he calls the 23rd Psalm. It actually recounts the same words that we heard the choir sing but the images will strike you as being very different. They are images of any inner city life. Young children making their precarious way through the inner city. And their safe spot is the home 
where they find that kind of shepherding love that is talked about in the 23rd Psalm. Tim Ladwick, through his illustrations, challenges us to think about how it is that we provide a shepherding space for children in this world. So I invite you to watch the images, to have them play with your imagination, and invite you into new ways of understanding these familiar and traditional words of God's presence. The Lord is my shepherd by Tim Ladwick. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head and my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I don't know how these images spoke to you, but these illustrations by Tim Ladwick awakened for me a new appreciation of how this psalm is so contemporary even as it is a part of our deep and rich heritage as people of faith. We need to understand how God's presence leads us through life. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 10, verses 11 to 18. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. 
I invite you to pray with me. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. God, who is our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So I don't know if there are any of you who are listening who actually have experience caring for sheep, being a shepherd. There might be one or two, but I suspect most of us know nothing about sleeping in the barn during lambing season, or learning to shear the coat of wool, or what it's like to watch for predators, wolves and bears to protect your flock, or to understand the behavior of sheep and what it is that they really need from you as a shepherd. For most of us, the image of shepherd simply takes us back to Sunday school and those pictures. The pictures of Jesus carrying a lamb in his arms. Or the picture they used to give us of Jesus leading a line of sheep through the hillside. Pictures that bring a certain nostalgia, assurance, and comfort. Though shepherding may not be in our sphere of experience, it somehow continues to have some resonance with us, something to which we can connect. Families planning the end of life service for their loved ones will often ask for the 23rd Psalm. Not just because it's familiar and recognizable and probably one of the few pieces in scripture that they can actually name, but because the words are so timeless. The words embrace us. Who doesn't want to have their spirit quieted? to have a sense of peace and presence with us during difficult days? Who doesn't want to know that we are protected by God's love in Christ? That we can be led to places of great joy and abundance as we sit at a banqueting table. Maybe in this pandemic time, we particularly would like to do that to know that we are not alone, that through all of life and into the forever, God is with us. The piece that Derek read from John 10 has Jesus identifying himself in one of the I am statements as the good shepherd. The shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. The shepherd who knows each sheep by name. The shepherd whose voice is recognized by the flock. The one who is the very gateway through which the flock gathers. But also the one who advises that there are others yet to come, others to be welcomed into the fold. On this Sunday, we hold on to that image of love and care as a reminder of the hope, of the solace, of the presence of the God who says, you can just be sheep. Just lie in the pasture. I've got this one. I'll take care of you. We all need that assurance, and particularly as we enter into this third wave of the pandemic and live again with restrictions on stay-at-home orders and how we are able to gather with one another. There is a weariness that just needs to know that someone is caring for us. But I want to invite us to think about how it is that we might take the invitation to embrace Jesus as the Good Shepherd as also an invitation to learn how to shepherd one another in community. 
how to be there for each other. I'm going to invite you to just think about your own life. To think about those moments when someone entered your life as a shepherd. Someone who guided and cared for you. Who restored your soul by their presence. It might have been a friend who walked with you through a time of grief because they had already walked that path themselves. It might have been a child, your child or grandchild, who invited you to rediscover the playfulness of lying in green pastures, of rolling in the grass, of enjoying kicking the stones as you walk on the beach. It may have been a parent who went to great efforts to set that banqueting table for the celebration in your life and who brought a moment of joy. It might have been that person who sits in front of you in the pew on Sunday mornings when you're in church and who you knew was walking through a difficult time in their life and the way in which they did it with such grace encouraged you with courage for your own struggles, your own path. We give thanks for those wonderful people who enter our lives as shepherds, who have this intimate connection with us, who when they speak our name, speak it with such love that we are reassured. And I think that all of us are called to be those shepherds. That we are called to notice when others need a presence to mentor them, to support them, to love them, to care for them in a way that leads them towards abundant life. Jesus, who is called the Good Shepherd in John's Gospel, is the same Good Shepherd who later on at the end of the Gospel meets Peter on the shore in this post-Easter resurrection and says to him, feed my sheep. Peter, if you love me, feed my sheep. Be a shepherd, in other words. Learn to care for my sheep. Look at what I have done and how I have been with you and go and live that with others. That's our call, to be a shepherding community. To understand that when we enter the fold through the gate of Christ, we enter as those who are changed by his love. We enter as those who are both vulnerable as sheep, but those who are called as leaders. There are moments in our life when we need others to shepherd us, and there are moments in our life when we have the blessed space and strength to shepherd someone else. And the gift of community is that we can hold space for both of those experiences, that we can be there for one another, both in our moments of vulnerability and in our moments of strength. To be a shepherding community, that is the invitation to be Christ's sheep, to be members of the fold, to be together in the pan of life. So how does this community, this fold of St. Andrews, live its shepherding with one another? I suspect that 
There are instances that each of you could speak of phone calls that have come, or baking that's been dropped off, or a note that's arrived in the mail, where you know that someone in the fold has remembered you. And we think, as a congregation, we remember those around us when Loaves and Fishes opens the door on Thursday morning and invites people into the food shelf. Whenever we speak in a way that broadens our welcome and includes others that we may not know as well. To be the shepherding community. So even in this time of pandemic, I invite each of us and I invite us as a community to take notice where we can support and be present to each other, to those places where we can offer the rod and the staff to comfort, where we can find the path of righteousness that will lead us to build a community that is stronger and more alive where we take the love of the shepherd and learn to share that love with one another. There may only be one shepherd, one good shepherd, one great shepherd, but that shepherd invites each of us to shepherd in love as we live in community. May it be so. Thanks be to God. Today I want to conclude the sermon with a prayer that talks about the commitment of being a good shepherd. So I invite you to pray with me. Good shepherd, teach us to follow you, to care for all that are close to us, to protect those who are threatened, to welcome those who are rejected, to forgive those who are burdened by guilt, to heal those who are broken and sick, to share with those who have little or nothing, to take the time to really know one another and to love as you have loved us. Good Shepherd, teach us to follow you, to spread compassion to those who are far away to speak for those who are voiceless, to defend those who are oppressed and abused, to work for justice for those who are exploited, to make peace for those who suffer violence, to take the time to recognize our connections and to love as you have loved us. Good Shepherd, teach us to follow you and to be faithful to calling you have given us to be shepherds in your name. Amen.
thank you for the many ways in which you continue to support the ministry of this congregation. Like a shepherd tending to those that are in their care, God has offered us rest and renewal, protection and mercy, love and nourishment. And so in response, we are invited to give a portion of our time, our energy, our gifts, and our prayers so that others in this world may experience the same. Our gifts are shared. Good Shepherd, who leads us to banqueting tables to anoint our lives with abundance and who makes the cups of our living overflow with joy, we give thanks for the fullness of life you give. Take and bless the gifts of our hearts and hands that others might be led to the banqueting tables of life. Amen. Let us pray. Creator God, we give thanks for all your creations. You have filled the earth with the sounds and smells and feelings of springtime. The sun is warming up the soil, and you can smell the earth waiting to be planted with seeds of various types. Crocuses and tulips are rising up to the sky, ready to open their buds. What beauty is starting to unfold before our eyes? It is a time of new beginnings. The sheep are giving birth to the baby lambs. The lambs are wobbling and struggling at first to stand, then running and jumping with joy. We thank you for the green pastures that provide nourishment to the sheep so they can, milk, can make milk for their lambs. This is a world you created so all may see its beauty. Teach us to be faithful caretakers, so all the earth will sing for generations to come of its abundance. Like a good shepherd, you take care of us and feed our souls with love. How blessed we are. Even though we may stray, you guide us back to your table to share a meal. We pray for all those who grieve a loss and all those who live with pain, that you may pour out your goodness and grace to them. We also pray for all those whose safety and support systems are compromised due to the pandemic, and they feel afraid and isolated. May they find comfort in knowing they are not alone. Like a good shepherd, you are watching over them. Sometimes we hear reports of conflict, gut violence, and racism, and do nothing. Forgive us, and grant us a passion for making peace and justice. With hearts united in gratitude for all your gifts, we are thankful. Amen. Are you a shepherd, good shepherd, who leads us safely through danger while calming our fears? Are you a father who shelters and feeds us, shares in our laughter and wipes away tears? Yes, you are shepherd, parent and teacher, but you are greater than Yeah. 
You have been led to the still waters and green pastures of worship. In this time, your soul has been restored, and God's presence has surrounded you with care. So leave this time to encourage others to be as a caring shepherd. Speak the name of others in love. Welcome others into the fold of your compassion. Share the blessing of knowing that the God who holds you in love, the Christ who opens the gates of life, and the Spirit who brings goodness and mercy goes with you. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.